Jeff Garland, actor, comedian. He's yes. performing at Caroline's on Broadway tomorrow through Sunday. Yes. You can catch him on the Goldbergs as well as HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes, we just filmed the new season, and it's, it's my favorite season we've ever done of Curb. What would surprise me in Curb? A uh, lot of gentle lovemaking. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to think, what would surprise you? There's that, that, by the way, there's... With you and Larry. But I have to say, here's the thing. Okay. It's what you want and what you're used to. But the premise, without giving it away, is something that everyone has experienced and said, I wish I could, and Larry David does. That's a good tease there. Yeah. That's what the premise is. And it is delightful. I love it. Because last year we had, the last season we had the fatwa. That, for my personal taste, that was a bit big. I like the subtle ones, yes. the ones that are human nature and stuff. And this is truly, everybody has experienced this and said, I wish I could. And Larry David does. Best cameo on Curb turned in by who? Oh, jeez. You know, I, I can't give any of those away uh, for this year. Well, you're not due this year. Okay, past year. Historically. Jeez. Muggsy Bogues. <laughs> 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 what? The, the one where uh, he hit Richard Lewis, I think, and Larry looking at his wiener. <laughs> that That's one of my favorites. And he was just such a sport. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one. My favorite actor. <laughs> my, by the way, the fa my favorite person I've ever worked with. You know, with. you just said Wiener on, I, on the. By interview. the way, <laughs> let me tell you something. I want to be really sincere on this. Okay. I'm talking to men everywhere. Don't say the other words for a penis. Okay. Don't. Okay. okay. When you're talking to a woman, if you say "touch my blankety blank," a woman's going to go, "What?" You say, oh, "Would you touch my wiener?" <laughs> Who's going to say no? They're all going to say yes. Oh, I'll, I'll be there, sure. Wiener, it's delightful. <laughs> and then when you go to the bathroom, say, I'll be right back. I have to make a sissy. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you today? Nothing. This is me every day. It's why I have a career. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? Do you know what your stand-up act tomorrow night is going to be? I have no idea. I will have no idea as I'm walking to the stage. I will have no idea. It might be, you know, I don't have an introduction. There's no MC when I work. And I play a different song every time I walk up to the stage. And sometimes that song, I tell the audience who it is and about the song and sometimes the lyrics and who wrote it. And that'll lead me to think of something, which leads me to something else and something else. And then, because I have complete supreme confidence that I'm funny. So I don't worry about anything else. I brought this up to Jonah Hill, and, and it didn't go over well. But I said, do people find you less funny when you lose weight? Right. And he had gotten skinny. Yes. Um, and and I, I, maybe I didn't present it in the right way, but he was saying, Dan, how could you say that? But I, I'm just curious. Dan, how could you say that? You know, I love Jonah Hill. I truly have love for him. If I could spend more time with him, I'd tell him to stop taking himself seriously. I always tell my children, take what you do seriously. Don't take yourself seriously. He should have laughed and, said, and dealt with it. And the reality is, I could be 170 or 370, although 370, I might look a bit uncomfortable. I'm funny no matter what. Weight has nothing to do with it. The thing about weight that can help certain people who aren't as funny is it makes you more vulnerable and more accessible when you're heavier. Yeah. You know, there's like more Chris empathy. Farley. Yes, but Chris would have been funny at any weight. Chris was just funny, period. You ever work with him? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he, I actually replaced him at Second City. I left Second City for a while, and when I came back, he was, you know, uh, there and brilliant and funny, and he went to SNL. Yeah, he was funny no matter what. Who's the sweet. guy you saw, first time you saw him, you went, oh, my God. Without a doubt, 
when I saw him. And, you know, it's so funny. No one, you'd think everybody would be talking about somebody. Everyone's so concerned with themselves. They don't look at others. I love laughing at other people and looking at others. And there's one person who was supremely, I'm saying supreme twice. I've never said it. And I hate the store Supreme. Um, I went, by the way, yesterday I needed a sweatshirt. I went into Supreme. They made me wait in line. And then they mock you when you're in line. The doorman <laughs> mocks you. Should I let everybody in? He's talking out loud. I'm like, what kind of power game are you playing? And then I go inside, and they had no selection. Anyhow, um, the one person I saw at Second City that truly, when I say from the first second blew me away, was Steve Carell. Steve Carell was so amazing that I couldn't believe it. He was doing some characters. Amazing. But he did, then he went to Dana Carvey's show. Yes. And then he got the office after that. Yes. Yes. And uh, have you seen that documentary on on the that show? I don't need to failed? because here's the thing. I watched that show. I know everything that went on behind the scenes. Uh, Robert Smigel yeah. is, is a very close friend of mine. So I knew all that stuff. I knew everything. So between knowing the behind the scenes and seeing the show when it aired, because it was my friends, um, I knew all that stuff. And yes, it was fascinating that it failed with those people. He's uh, Jeff Garland. You can see him at Caroline's on Broadway tomorrow through Sunday. Of course, the Goldbergs and HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yes. I've been mentioning this Lakers situation. And yes. uh, during the commercial break, you said that you okay. actually got a chance to sit next to Jerry West. Well, here's, the, here's the thing. I've been a Bulls fan my life. Yeah. Okay, my whole life. It's like the Knicks. I don't, you, you can't expect me to keep going and support a team when you showed such disrespect. And the Knicks are worse than the Bulls. And the Bulls, enough with how they've destroyed that team. So, when I went to L.A., numerous people said, hey, and by the way, former Nick fans, Doug Robinson, who produces the Goldberg, yeah. for one, for sure, come on to the Knicks, come over to the Knicks. So I start going to the Knicks games. And I'm having a ball. And I'm like, this is a team. I start watching every game. One night, um, I, I'm at, the, I'm at uh, the Staples Center, and I meet Mr. Balmer. And he's a delight. And he invites me to go to a game with him. So about three weeks ago, I went to the game, had dinner with Mr. Balmer before the game, sat with him during the game, Jerry West, to my right, spent talked to Jerry West during the game, and at halftime, I talked with Jerry West. Jerry West, who I always look at from the stands going, look at how focused he is. He's stoic, and he knows every nuance. <laughs> Which, by the way, he does know every nuance, but that dude ain't stoic. And do you know what he was obsessed with? We talked about um, the, the college players coming out. And he loves, he thinks the best player in the draft is the number two guy. What's his name? R.J. Barrett? No, the other one. John Morant? John Morant. He thinks John Morant is a miracle. Wait, should you be saying this? I don't care. They, I the mean, Clippers, it's Jerry West. I know. Like, if Jerry West other says GM, it. Other GMs, if they listen to you, should pay attention. That's what I'm saying. Well, I think. I would take him over Zion. You know Why? Because Jerry West said, <laughs> no other reason. I don't know enough. But a Jerry West. But here's the thing. No. Talked some basketball with them. Talked a lot of basketball about Steve Ballmer. During the game, he's screaming for defense. He cares so much. He cares so much. He's the richest owner, richest owner in sports. Forget basketball. In sports. They're going to get one, if not two, without a doubt, of these big free agents. Because they're so well run. Yeah. And Doc is the best. Doc's good friends with Larry David. So I've gotten to know Doc a little bit. The best. Do they play golf together? They play golf together. Okay. But do you know what Jerry West was talking about at halftime? Do you want to know what he was obsessed with? How about this? Okay. I'm going to take a break. Let's take a break and we'll find out after the break. See? And if there's a live <laughs> read, I'm going to participate. <laughs> I'm in the man cave, and it's delightful. It is. This is the New York one. We have the new one. I know. I'm, I'm going to come out and see it. It's unbelievable. I'm driving all the way out. Okay. On a scooter. I like it. <laughs> dressed like Abe Lincoln just to get some attention. Okay. Uh, when we last left off, uh, yeah. Jeff Garland from the Goldberg's Curb Your Enthusiasm was going to tell an unbelievable story. Well, I don't know if it's unbelievable, but the oh. two things that Jerry West was obsessed about at halftime. Okay. And okay. by the way, I'm in a room with him and Balmer, and the other Balmer's got one pal, pal, partner. I cannot remember his name. Okay. Okay. 
And so it's a few people. He was obsessed with two things. There was an article in the New York Times, which I had read, about how the, how this one company out of Italy charges so much money for prescription glasses. Like prescription glasses should be next to nothing. And this one company has made it so expensive. And he was incensed. <laughs> I was too. But hearing Jerry West, and then he was also incensed that a lot of the local businesses in his hometown have gone out of business because of Amazon. And he was incensed. <laughs> and this is what he talked about the whole time. And Palmer is very much about a free market and you do what you do. They didn't argue, but Steve would smile as Jerry was going off on this. We were uh, talking during the uh, commercial break about yeah. can you be too good looking to be funny? Can you, yeah. like, like we, and we have a theory that if, if Brad Pitt, if we didn't know Brad Pitt as an actor, but he came yeah. out on stage, as a or Bradley Cooper. As a stand up, yeah. they, could, they could not do it. Because They'd have to have a skill level. Here's the thing. You can pull it off, but you have to have, as good looking you are, you have to have a skill level that high. You know, be that funny. Like Dane Cook. Yeah. And when he was younger, he was, he was funny, you know? Yeah. I mean, funny enough and, and, and good looking. A little too good looking? Um... No, but he, here's the thing. There's a group of comedians, and and by the way, I'm not begrudging them. They were born this way, uh, and I would put Dane as one of them, uh, Chris D'Elia as another one. Yeah. These are guys that look like in high school they were bullies. And to me, from David Letterman all around in all directions, comedians we're the underdogs. We're the little guys. And we point out hypocrisy and what's funny and make fun of it. We're not the bullies. So there's a whole group now that come off to me like the, I don't I, look, I don't want to say that Dane or Chris aren't funny because they are funny and they're talented. But to me, there's a vibe of you picked on people. You know what I mean? And I came from, I'm one of the little guys. I heard Letterman, the reason I included Letterman at the beginning was Letterman talked about that in high school being, you know, I had a weird high school experience for a comedian. I was the most popular kid in school. Like the kid, when you're the class clown, you're usually an outcast. You know, everyone goes, oh God. I was a class clown. And how were you treated? Um... Royally, I mean. You know, oh, look at you! Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, same with I'm me. Basketball star. Oh, you played basketball. Cheerleader. Too. Got a cheerleader girlfriend. Yeah, no, I owned the local pumpkin patch with my family, and so I'm kidding. But um, <laughs> I just want to throw it in there. And the look on your face yeah. was worth every second of that. You looked at me like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin patch. patch. Yeah. I, I, by the way, it would have been fun to grow up in a pumpkin patch. What's your family do? Pumpkins. Um, anyhow. Um, <laughs> No, I think that there's a group, but as I mentioned, Sarah Silverman, she broke through with the, because she's so beautiful and she is equally as funny as beautiful she is. See, that's why she's the exception. Uh, most other beautiful women do not become great comedians. I had a real embarrassing moment with Sarah Silverman. What happened? I was on Jimmy Kimmel. Uh-huh. And I didn't realize they were dating. They had just started dating. And all of a sudden, Sarah Silverman's off to the side. She's not on stage. Right. She's just over there, and she's going like this. And Right. Now, Alanis Morissette was the guest. Right. Uh, you know, She was on with Jimmy the whole week and right. singing. So we're just sitting there as Alanis Morissette's over here singing. And I, I think Sarah Silverman is waving at, you. Waving at me. So yeah. she's going like this. And then, you know, and I'm going, man, I'm killing out here. Yeah. And so, commercial break, she starts to walk up. I get up out of my chair. You're a loser. <laughs> you did not. You did I, not. And you I, did not. And then I, I was like, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I think it's go time. Right. And I, she walks over and gives Kimmel a kiss, and I go, oh, boy. But here's the thing. She didn't notice you. If she was in Sarah's a commitment to like that, so she only saw Jimmy. She didn't see you making an ass of yourself. Okay. All right. So but, know that. She, she, she knows now. Have you told her the story or just right I, now? I, I'm just saying it right yeah. now. Yeah. No. Um, but you, if you see her, just say. No, I'll tell well, her the story. Yeah. She'll laugh. Yeah. But, but, She'll I, laugh, but trust me, she did not notice. I said it to Sandler because Sandler mm. grew up with Sarah Silverman. Right. And, yes. I, and I told him the story. And, you know, he was like, Danny, Danny, what's wrong? Yeah. Like, a, yeah. I, 
There's this scene in Swingers. Yeah. At the very end, when Vince Vaughn is in the diner. Yeah. And there's the, oh, the mother baby with the baby. Yeah, and she's got a baby, yeah. and she's you know. By the doing way, that. I'm doing a reality show with Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, Tom Morello, and I are doing a reality show. Tom Morello. Yeah. So ask me what channel it's on or where it's going to be. Where's it going to be, Jeff? I have no idea. Ask me what it's about. <laughs> you have no idea either. No. We started filming <laughs> at Cubs opening day. We started filming. We have a crew. We started filming our reality show, and it was hysterical. I don't know what it's about, and I don't know where it's going to be. So this is three Chicago guys. it's already guys. financed, by the way. Yes, three Chicago Because Morello's a Cubs yeah, fan. Yep, yep, diehard. Why, why don't you just call it, I don't know what it is? But we, uh, by the way, I think it's, I, we don't know. We, we're figuring it out. But by the way, it's already like paid for and being filmed. Is it green lit or it, green lighted? Or? It's green lit. Green we're, lit. We're making it. It's paid for. Don't know what it's about. Uh, yeah. And it was conceived two weeks ago. I'm not making this up. <laughs> Vince Vaughn and I conceived it two weeks ago. And Vince goes, what about Tommy Morello? I go, done. Let's go. <laughs> Swear to God. I wouldn't put you three together. Right. It's not exactly, yeah. Two of us. Well, Tom Morello's the wild card no matter what. By the way, we're looking to him for the comedy. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> Although he's got a great sense of humor. Just let him play guitar. Just let him play. Oh, my God. That dude. The, the, the ghost of Tom Joad when he does oh that my God. with Springsteen. With, with, come on. There's it's, a video up. It's up unbelievable. Go online to YouTube when the show's over. And, um, of course. And watch him rip it. Rip it. And and you've got some pretty good guitar players in that in Springsteen's band, yes. and they almost like bow down to Morello when he to. starts it's, cranking it's, it's, there. It's, I saw him do that live, and it blew my mind. Do you remember first time you were on Letterman? Yes, I do. Like it was. Yes, I remember uh, not sleeping for two nights before, literally going almost forty-eight hours without sleep. I was so excited. I had a dream when I did sleep prior to that of bombing, which I'm not a negative guy, and Letterman behind me shaking his head no. I remember standing in the wings, um, I. I and, and they started playing my intro music, which um, Got to Give It Up by Marvin Gaye is what I requested. And um, what's the gentleman's name who pulled the curtain? Biff. Uh, Biff Henderson. And he pulled the curtain and a calmness in the Ed Sullivan Theater came over me because I had my friend's, my friend's girlfriend had said to me a week before, you know, you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And to myself in that moment, I went... I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And I went out and killed it. But aren't you listening for Letterman's laugh at all? Well, I don't. Yes, of course. And I heard it. And I knew. I was destroying. And I just knew he's got to be digging this. And he did. So it was It was one of the great did moments. Did you get invited career. over? Yes. Oh, you did? Over. Yeah. 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 It was. It was it's I, always. I, I hated being on Letterman. Really? Yes. I was never comfortable. Well, he doesn't. He doesn't come by and say hello. No. And then I, I was on Leno, and Jay's back there for right, let me tell like a half about, hour. Let me tell you something about the Jay Leno thing. Okay. All right. So I do Leno's show, and there's a package in my dressing room, a little box, before I go out. I go out. He comes by and he says hello. He's very warm and welcoming. I go out. And there's a cue for me to tell a story. I've brought a cup, which I actually have, which the Cubs gave away at their games with a, with a Coke or a Pepsi of a Cubs outfielder jumping and the ball going over the fence. <laughs> it's the only team that had a cup of the other team hitting a home run. Who the hell thought of this? I've been a fan of this team for my life. They're nuts. This is years ago. How much time do I have, Seaton? Uh, about 30. 30 right, seconds. I'll, tell, I'll wrap okay. up quick. I okay. know how to do it. So his cue for me to tell the story, because they worked it out ahead of time, is, eh, see, so you're from Chicago, eh? He gave me the cue twice after I had already done it. <laughs> On the way home in the car, I opened the box. It says, great job tonight. He told me that before I'd done the show. <laughs> That's the opposite of comfortable with Letterman. He's uh, Jeff Garland, the Goldbergs, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and Caroline's tomorrow night through Sunday. Great to see you, buddy. An honor to be here. I look forward to the new studio. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune into Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.